Let's get into Brush Street Beat presented by McLaren Healthcare. You guys, our guest today is a very special one. We've got former Tigers pitcher Todd, jo Todd Jones joining us today. Todd, how are you doing? We're excited to have you. I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's nice to be with you guys. It really is. It's great to see you. And we're going to talk a little bit today about a couple of games specifically because we're lucky enough that our friends at Fox Sports Detroit have been running some classic Tigers games. And tonight we get to watch the last game at Tiger Stadium, which you were a very big part of. You actually pitched the very last pitch. So let's start right there. What do you remember about that game? Oh, gosh, it was uh, it was a uh... At the, at the time, at, in my career, it was the biggest moment in my career because uh, it was 1999 and I was up, my, my, my first year was, was 1993 and I'd never been a part of anything that big and that special and that spectacular. So um, just, just the whole, what I remember the most would be the culmination of the entire season coming up to that final weekend homestand and, uh, um, you know, the final homestand. And then, um, you know, once the game started, uh, well, the president of the Tigers at the time was a guy named John McHale. And he came in the locker room and he says, hey, boys, I don't care what happens, but you guys better win this game today. So um, there was uh, there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of pressure because we wanted to uh, we wanted to send out uh, send out Tiger Stadium on a high note. And we were able to do that and had a great time and great experience. Todd, I was at that game and actually a member of the media covering it. And what I really remember, maybe it's because, you know, I was born and raised here in Detroit, is the pregame ceremony where all the old Tigers came out of center field and they introduced all of them. You're a player. You're wearing that old English D. Does that give you really a, a better sense of history about how old the Tigers really are, charter member 1901 to the Tigers, and just the history of this club from Ty Cobb all the way up to, uh, well, now people would say Miguel Cabrera, but, I mean, the Tigers are truly one of the uh, uh, crown jewels of, uh, of Major League Baseball. Yeah, there's no question about it. My first year in Detroit was 1997, and that was the thing that was impressed upon me when I was uh, – when I was first with the team of just how historic and how wonderful this franchise was and still is. And I'm, uh, you know, so I would, I would listen to the stories and uh, even though the team wasn't really doing that well at, at the time, people still kept up with the Tigers. They still listened on radio to Ernie Harwell. They still watch games on television. And um, after the, after the Red Wings were having their runs uh, during those seasons, they would they would tune in they would tune into the Tigers, but they always kept their ear, and they were always paying attention to us. And that was uh, that that's just a culmination of of just you know grandparents passing it down to their kids, mm -hmm. and then their kids passing it down to their kids, and really instilling the history of hey, this guy out out here played right field, but I know a right fielder when I was a kid named Al Kaline and and he was about as good as there as there was. And and the Tigers always had that one player throughout all generations that people could talk to and mention as as being a truly great player. A lot of history behind the Tigers, and you got to be a huge part of the ending of one era and the beginning of a new era playing in the first game at Comerica Park. What was the atmosphere like for that game? At Comerica, the first game in Comerica, it was, uh, all I remember is it was freezing cold um, that day. Uh, because everybody knows, um, you know, opening day in Detroit is is really a celebration because it's the end of winter. And... Um, <laughs> But that doesn't mean it's not it's not cold. It's it could be a coin flip from fifty degrees to twenty five degrees. Well, that year, it was twenty five degrees, and it was uh, it was awfully awfully cold. But it I mean the place was packed. Uh, but one thing that I remember was the difference between Tiger Stadium and Comerica when they're packed, because Tiger Stadium everybody was so on top of you. Uh, the fans were so much closer than they are in Comerica Park. And uh, that was a that that was a big difference that took some time just to get used to. So, uh, but now now we're used to it. We can spread out the all the fans got all the room that they need, and uh, the Tiger Den and 
all those all those nice things, the carousels and Ferris wheels and all that stuff, uh, you know, keeps the keeps the kids happy while the uh, while the Tigers are winning. So it's a it's a nice, uh, nice, n nice stadium. And it was a it was a great place to play. That mindset of a closer. I'm really kind of curious about it because I would imagine you have to have a short memory because if you blow a save, you can't dwell on it because you know chances are you're going to be out the next game trying to close out another ball game. Yeah, that's right. And that and and really that was kind of the key what it what it took to really learn for me uh how to how to compartmentalize, deal with deal with the situation that was going on tonight and um you know, get through it or don't and uh, learn from it and, um, you know, be ready to um, show up the next day, ready to go like nothing ever happened, good or bad, in the, in the previous <laughs> night. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, being a Detroiter, people always talked about you had to have the same kind of mentality as a, as a hockey goalie or, as a, uh, or as, a, as a field goal kicker because, uh, you know, you're the biggest save goal or field goal is your next one and um you know that's 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 kind of the mentality that you have to have and especially in detroit um it's a it's a tough city because uh you know they want their guys to win so when those guys struggle it's a uh you know it's a it's a fun ride to have to to have to listen to the all the or read the papers and listen to the radios and all that thing of but but it's all hey that's all kind of part of it you have to deal with it and learn how to handle it as Art mentioned, you were a very successful closer. And I want to ask you a little bit about the development of the position itself, because the, the term save didn't really count as a stat until 69, I believe it was. And then closer wasn't really a position until the late 80s. So for you, what was that journey like? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to assume you started as a pitcher and eventually worked your way to being a closer. Yeah, as a starter, um, I think most mm -hmm. mo most people do. Nowadays, it's it's even more specialized than it was when I was playing. Uh, they can they can draft uh, you know relievers out of college nowadays, and they become they become relievers and closers. But really, it you know it's like anything else. I was a reliever because I wasn't a very good starter, and um, you know, but I but my arm was able to bounce back, and I was able to be pretty resilient. And, and, you know, one of my, one of my best abilities was my durability was, mm -hmm. was to be able to go out there every night and, and absorb the, uh, the games that I was required to pitch. And, 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 you know, that's, that's kind of part of it as well. But, um, you know, the, since, since the, uh, since the evolution of the closer has kind of turned into a, to a thing now, um, my generation guys were the greatest of all time with Mariano Rivera and Trustman and guys like that. So, um, you know, I'm, it, it's nice to see nowadays, um, the, the importance of the sixth and the seventh and the eighth inning guy as a reliever. So we can all kind of, uh, kind of work together to try to get the starter the win and make sure the Tigers get the win because, um, you know, there's nothing worse than having a reliever, you know, mess the game up and cost Verlander or, or you know, Matt Boyd or whoever it is now, um, cost them a win. So we wanted to just keep the line moving, hand the ball to the next guy, and uh, we'll see it tomorrow night. That, that was kind of how we really thought about it. Todd, I got to ask you, because you're talking about durability and really how tough you were as a player. Another guy that comes to mind when I think of that is Darren McCarty, and I hear you guys are really good friends. So I just want to ask you how that came about and what's your friendship like with Darren? That was really an interesting thing, and um, you know they were they were winning Stanley Cups when I first got into Detroit, so they were the they were the cats meow, and uh, I kind of took a I kind of took a loving uh, man crush on Darren McCarty because I kind of framed him as a as a pit bull on ice skates because he didn't he didn't put up he didn't put up with anything. He was he was kind of the enforcer, but then he was also a very gifted player that could actually score when he needed to, or score when he had to, or score when Eiserman was getting water or whatever. But um, you know, Darren Darren was one of those tough guys that that helped put that team together and make them who they were. And 
very young in my in my tiger career i'm like i want to be like that dude because he didn't he didn't back down from anybody and uh he didn't he didn't look for trouble but but he sure did he sure took care of it if it ever came his way and then when they won the stanley cup we had the chance to actually meet and and uh you know visit and hang out and and uh he's a he's a really really nice guy and He's retired now and he's still doing radio and uh, I'm, I've always been a big fan. One more question for you, Todd. We've talked a little bit about the Tigers. We've talked a little bit about the Red Wings too. Both of these teams are in very similar situations, going through a rebuild, but they have very encouraging prospect pools. If you had a message for Detroit fans right now, what would you say? Steve Eiserman is your general manager. And uh, <laughs> Steve Eiserman and Chris Illich uh, can get the magic touch back. Mm -hmm. Now, Mr. Illich told the Tigers when we were coming up, hey, if you guys ever get close, I will do what I have to do to get the players to put us over the top. And when we got close, Mr. Illich did that. So I know it's in the Illich's DNA that if either team ever gets close to where they need a guy to trade deadline or they need a big free agent to make a splash, they're always going to do that. But right now, as far as the Tigers are concerned, uh, they, have, they have some wonderful pitching prospects and they've got, and they've got some hitters coming up. But um, you know, this is a tough league. This is a tough, uh, this is a tough place to play. It takes wonderful teams to win and to, and to be consistent uh, like, in the, like in the past for the Tigers. So it's gonna take some time for these young players to, to develop and to and to gain confidence and things like that, like like we were afforded uh, up until we were able to kind of turn things around in 2006. But that doesn't happen overnight. And one owner that does understand that is Mr. Illich. And uh, all the Tiger fans or all the fans really want to see is progress, right? They just want to mm -hmm. see teams moving forward. So, uh, and I don't think that, I don't think the Red Wings or the Tigers have ever been accused of not trying to move forward. They have always they have always been after that, you know, after the guys that are going to help them out. So um, so we just have to wait and see. Continue to be patient. Continue to wear your Tiger hat and your Red Wing hat because the days are coming, and you just don't have leadership the way we have in either organization uh, that can put together championship teams or be part of championship teams like the Red Wings or the Tigers have. So I'm excited to to still pull for these guys every night. And uh, I know that if we can continue to push the process forward, we can have a good result. Definitely good things on the horizon here in Detroit. Thank you, Todd, so much for joining us today. And a big thank you to our friends at McLaren Health System for presenting Brush Street Beat this week and every week right here on The Word on Woodward.